Hey Tenno, welcome to my channel. In this video, I will go over some of the primary weapons you should be using in Steel Path. These weapons are mainly aimed at beginners, so if you are looking into getting into Steel Path, this is for you. I will be showing a list of weapons that will perform well in Steel Path. I will show a new player friendly build without a lot of investment considering resources are limited for players just getting into Steel Path. And a second build that has more resources such as former, arcanes and prime mods just to show how you can upgrade the build further. If you're looking for weapons for the star chart instead, check out the link above. You'll notice several weapons missing from the list, namely the Steel Path Circuit Incarnon weapons. If you have these Incarnons, then yes, they are easily some of the best weapons. From Tori Incarnon to Boar Incarnon, they all perform well, but I find it silly to recommend weapons that you can only get from Steel Path to be used by someone who wants to get into Steel Path so you won't be seeing them on the list. Before we get started, let's talk about the two things that can really improve your damage. The first is Galvanized Mods. These mods can be purchased from the Arbiter of Hexes using Vitus Essence. Vitus Essence can be found from Arbitration Missions. These Galvanized Mods are the link between Star Chart and Steel Path. Essentially, Galvanized Mods are a variant of certain mods that have a certain criteria and when that criteria is achieved, it gives additional buffs to you. For example, Galvanized Hell gives multi-shot to shotguns. On kills, it gives additional multi-shot up to 120%. So in total, it gives 230%. Compare this with its base version, Hell's Chamber, it only gives 120% multi-shot. This means Galvanized mods start out slower, but in the end, gives a bigger buff. The second thing that really improves your damage is Arcanes. There is a slot in all your weapons for Arcanes, but it first needs to be unlocked. Primary and secondary arcane adapters are obtained from Tashin in any relay and is purchased with Steel Essence. Steel Essence is a resource that is dropped from Acolytes in Steel Path. The arcanes themselves come from a variety of sources like Eidolons, Citrine's Mission Tyana Pass, Conjunction Lua, but the main arcanes we want to use are from the Acolytes themselves. I know what you're thinking, we need to beat Steel Path to get arcanes, but we don't have arcanes yet. Don't worry, the beginner friendly builds do not need an arcane to work. Acolytes drop several types of arcanes, but the main one we will be using is Primary Merciless. Primary Merciless gives a damage buff for every kill and can go up to 360%. Compared to the Serration mod, Serration only gives 165%. So in our later builds, where we will be using arcanes, you will notice that the basic damage mods are removed and Primary Merciless is used in its place for damage. Primary Merciless gives up more damage in the end, but it also opens up more mod space for other mods. Now that we got that out of the way, let's get on with the list. First up is Nadarook. No surprise here. Nadarook is one of the best weapons and no-brainer, it helps you get into Steel Path. It comes free after the new war. It comes with its own weapon slot and potato. Nadarook is a bow and it uses the perfect shot mechanic. Instead of letting it charge full, if you release the attack just right when it's charging, it fires off a large prov projectile instead. That is a perfect shot. Perfect Shot have larger AoEs, more damage and infinite punch through. That means it can go through large groups, damaging every enemy in the line. The Perfect Shot is not the only reason it is so powerful. Let's look at it without any mods. Nadrook comes with 4 V Madurai polarities and you might notice that most Madurai mods are focused on damage. Most weapons barely come with any polarities. 4 Vs are super helpful in building the weapon. The one thing to remember about Nadrook is the charge up speed. Because we want to have Perfect Shots all the time, you need to choose a fire rate that you are comfortable with. There are three main mods that can help with this. Vile Acceleration, Speed Trigger and Vigilante Favor. Vile Acceleration is a corrupted mod and can be obtained from the Deimos Orokin Vaults. Vigilante Favor is obtained from Cetus Bounties. If the fire rate is too high, you might end up missing the perfect shot. Too slow and can barely fire off shots. Personally, I find Speed Trigger to be comfortable but that is really down to your preference. Let's look at a new player build. No Arcanes, no former needed. Not even galvanized mods. You don't even need max rank mods. Nadaric is just that good. We have serration for damage, split chamber for multi-shot, speed trigger for more faster charge. We have two crit mods, vital sense for crit damage, and critical delay for more crit chance at a cost of slightly reduced fire rate. If you don't have critical delay, point strike is good too. We are building for viral, so we combine toxin and coal. We are using two 60-60 mods, they are called 60-60 mods as they give 60% elemental damage and 60% status chance. We have hunter mutations that give slash damage on crits, slash procs, bypass armor and can help take down tankier Eximus units that didn't die on the initial hit. 
Now if you have galvanized mods, you can switch split chamber for galvanized chamber. This gives you more multi-shot. Now let's add in an arcane primary merciless. And you'll notice the build doesn't change much. We added galvanized aptitude in place of serration since primary merciless is there to provide raw damage. Galvanized aptitude increases your damage for every status the enemy has and is really good on an arrow. Natarok can easily deal with Steel Path and can easily kill Acolyte. In fact, all you need is the Natarok. But what if you want to do massive crits with Natarok? Let's look at a red crit build. Starting from Arcane, instead of Primary Merciless, we'll be using Primary Deadhead. Deadhead gives us additional damage with headshot kills and additional damage with headshot. Same with crit mods. Vital Sense for crit damage and critical delay for more crit chance at a cost of a slightly reduced fire rate. If you don't have critical delay, point strike is good too. Instead of viral, we were built for corrosive. We combine electric and toxin. Electric 6060 mods are rare to get, so we are using the basic 90% elemental version and toxin 6060 mod. We are using corrosive as it is effective against the toughest armored enemies. The corrupted and cold is effective at increasing crit damage. We kept galvanized chamber for more multi-shot. Galvanized scope increases crit chance for every headshot and a buff for more crit chance with headshot kills. Bladed rounds give crit damage after getting a kill when aiming down sights. This is a great build for getting those massive red crits. Not my favourite style as I like fast draw speed, but certainly fun for all the big numbers. You might say bows are not for you. In fact, I find fully auto weapons much more my style. Next up is the Fenmore. Fenmore is an Incarnon weapon and its blueprints are found on Zariman. An Incarnon weapon means it has two forms, its base form and its Incarnon form. Using its base form charges a bar and it transforms into an Incarnon weapon with the amount of charge turning into its ammo. Fenmore's base form is a semi-auto rifle and landing headshots charges its bar. Its Incarnon form is a fully auto minigun and no joke, its Incarnon form is absolutely fun to play, not to mention its damage. Incarnon weapons have several levels of perks that can be unlocked. These are called evolutions. Let's go over the evolutions. First is between 50% accuracy and 50% less recoil, 20% fire rate, or 80% projectile. If you struggle with landing headshots to get the encounter mode, go for the first. If you're like me and like to spray and pray, go for the 20% fire rate. For the next evolution, I like ready retaliation. It reduces reload time. When it transforms to encounter mode, the time it takes is the same as reload time. So if you reload from empty, your transformation speed is quicker too. For the next evolution, we will go for Elemental Excess. I know what you're thinking, less crit chance equals less damage, right? Just stay with me and we'll explain more for the next evolution. The next evolution is Devouring Attrition. Fenmore has a 50% chance to deal 2000 damage when it's a non-crit. That's why we went with a negative crit for the previous evolution. Less crit means more times to trigger Devouring Attrition. This is the reason why Fenmore is an absolute monster. Time for the beginner no forma arcade build. Similar to other builds, we have serration for raw damage, galvanized chamber for multi-shot, viral with toxin and cold combined. We have heat for additional damage, shred for fire rate and punch through. This is a super budget friendly build for the Fenmore. Remember, we don't want any crit chance for devouring attrition. And now, for the later game build. We have primary merciless as an arcade for base damage, galvanized chamber for multi-shot, Aptitude for more raw damage with status procs. Viral again by combining cold and toxin. Termite rounds and hellfire for more heat procs. Viral acceleration for the rapid fire rate. Shred for even more fire rate. This build really helps roleplay a minigun. It fires fast and hard and can shred through hordes and bosses alike. Even Archon can easily be killed with this but it does struggle with Acolyte. For some reasons, the devouring attrition of the Zariman Incarnons are not triggered on them, so you need a huge amount of shots before going down. But it can easily handle Steel Path no problem. Get the Fenmore if you like fully auto machine gun, spray and play. If you're looking at the hordes and hordes of enemies in Warframe and think, hmm, what I need is a sniper rifle, then I got a good one for you. The Perigale is a sniper rifle that fires 4 burst rounds. 
The Perigil blueprints and parts are found on Lua, mainly the conjunction survival missions. The blueprints can be bought using Lua Trax Plasm, the resources dropped from the Trax enemies on Lua. Archmedian Yonta sells them on Zarimon. Perigil has a unique trait. If all four burst shots land on a headshot or getting a headshot kill, you will get the Gale Force buff, meaning you will not be using any ammo. If you keep landing headshots or getting headshot kills, you won't even need to reload. Perigale also has two zoom modes. The first is a 2x zoom that gives 20% crit damage and an even greater 4x zoom gives crit damage at 40%. This builds up for a massive headshot damage. Now time for the beginner build. We have serration for damage and galvanized chamber for multi-shot. Fighter sense for crit damage and critical delay for more crit chance at a cost of slightly reduced fire rate. If you don't have critical delay, point strike is good too. We are building for viral, so we combine toxin and cold. We are using two 6060 mods. These are called 6060 mods as they give 60% elemental damage and 60% status chance. We have hunter munitions that give slash damage on crit, slash procs bypass armor, and can help take down tankier Eximus units that didn't die to the initial hit. We can barely squeeze in a fire rate mod. We put a slightly ranked speed trigger for a bit of faster fire rate. As for later game builds, there are two ways you can mod. You can mod for huge crits, or you can take advantage of the Gale Force buff and have a high fire rate. For more crit, we are going for this. Similar to the Natharote build, we have primary deadhead that gives us damage for headshots and headshot damage multipliers. Instead of viral, we are building for corrosive cold. Mix in toxin and electric for corrosive and an extra cold mod. This gives more damage to the corrupted, one of the tougher factions, and cold gives additional crit damage. Keep the same crit mods, critical delay, and vital sense. Add in bladed rounds for even more crit damage while aiming down sights. For speed, replace bladed rounds with shred. This gives more fire rate to clear rooms and take advantage of not needing to reload. The damage with this build is still huge and to top that off, very fast. This build can easily deal with acolytes, like when one walked in front of me. If you are liking what you've seen so far, like and subscribe. Moving to our next weapon, the Tenet Archaplasmor. Archaplasmor is a shotgun that fires a large projectile, making it good for large crowds. The base Archaplasmor is found in the clan dojo, but being a Tenet weapon, it can be obtained after defeating a sister of Parvos. Tenet weapons come with additional element called progenitor bonus. The frame you use to spawn the sister dictates the element given, and the percentage bonus can go from 20 to 60%. Toxin or heat be the best elements to have, but in this demo, we are just using a suboptimal impact bonus that is minimal, but you can see it makes quick work of steel path anyways. Let's look at the build. In keeping with no arcanes, we are using point blank for damage, galvanized hell for multi shot, galvanized savvy is like aptitude, but for shotguns, it gives additional damage for status effects the enemy has. Going for viral, so mix toxin and cold, shotgun barrage for additional fire rate, Critical deceleration for crit chance. Archaplasma has a long reload time, so tactical pump to speed that up. Moving on to the later game build, we have primary merciless, so we do not need point blank. We keep galvanized hell and savvy for multi shot and additional damage. We are aiming for viral, so combine toxin and cold. Critical deceleration for crit chance, ravage for crit damage, hunter munitions, give slash procs or critical hits. Slash procs bypass armor and take down tankier Eximus units that didn't die on the initial hit. Galvanize acceleration for extra projectile speed. Max rank primary merciless gives reload speed to the weapon, so we remove tactical pump in this build. Staying within the shotgun family, the next weapon is the Cedo. Cedar blueprints and parts can be found from farther in Deimos. This is a fully auto shotgun and fires large amount of pellets quickly. But that's not the only reason it's so powerful. Cedo has an alternate fire that launches a glaive that bounces around spreading status. The status procs are forced and Cedo's primary fire does more damage for each unique status effect. Cedo's alternate fire is perfect for status priming. That means it doesn't do damage by itself but more for putting status on enemies quicker so that its primary fire can do the damage. Let's look at a no arcane or former build. No arcanes in this build, so we are using point blank for damage, galvanized hell for multi shot, 
Galvanized Savvy gives additional damage for status effects that the enemy has. Going for Viral, so mix Toxin and Cold, critical deceleration for crit chance. Hunter Munitions give Slash Procs on critical hits, Slash Procs bypass armor, and can help take down tankier Eximus units that didn't die on the initial hit. Lastly, Shotgun Barrage for a fully auto shotgun to be even faster. Now for the later game build, not much has changed aside from max ranking the two galvanized mods. We are using primary merciless so we can remove point blank. We add in ravage for more crit damage. That's it, Cedo can absolutely start shredding from this. Remember, most of his power comes from his alt fire. Alt fire into a crowd and then fire its primary fire. We covered a sister tenant weapon, time for a leech kuva weapon, and also an AoE weapon, that is, the kuva tonkor. The tonkor is similar to tenant weapons, and can be obtained after defeating a lich. Kuva weapons come with an additional element, called progenitor bonus. The frame you use to spawn the lich dictates the element given, and the percentage bonus goes from 20 to 60%. Toxin or heat will be the best elements to have. In this demo, we have a 40% toxin build. Toncore is a single shot grenade launcher. Fire once, reload, fire again. It covers a large area and can deal massive damage. The reload can be annoying, but since you are clearing whole rooms, that isn't a massive deal breaker. Let's look at the build. Seems a bit sparse, doesn't it? Thanks to the progenitor toxin, we only need cold to form viral. Serration for damage, chamber for multi-shot, critical delay for crit chance, and Hunter Munition for Slash procs to clear any enemies that survive the explosion. And now for one with Arcane Informer. We are going for Heavy Calibre for damage, but I know what you're thinking. Didn't I say that Primary Merciless will be doing the damage? You're right, but the key thing we are using it for is the negative accuracy. See, with less accuracy, that means multi-shot bombs would be flying all over the place and hit enemies even further away. Not great for a sniper, but fantastic to clear the room, and the next one too. We upgraded Cryo Rounds to its prime version. Keep it base since this is optional. Pair it with Toxin to form viral. Galvanized Chamber for multi-shot. Vital Sense and crit delay for crit chance and crit damage. Hunter Munition is back for slash procs on those pesky Eximus units. Prime Firestorm or just base Firestorm is a mod that increases your blast radius, and you can imagine that that mod is so good on AoE explosive weapons. Now we've gone through the list and we didn't even have a single prime weapon. Well don't worry, we got the Phantasma Prime. If you're a fan of beam weapons, this one's for you. It fires 6 continuous beams that deals damage and inflicts status procs. Status is the main source of damage for this weapon. Phantasma does have an alternate fire. You charge up an explosive projectile that explodes and break into seeking projectiles. This is also a good way to spread status. Despite being a beam weapon, it is classed as a shotgun, therefore needs shotgun mods. Let's first look at a no arcane no former build. We have point blank for damage, hell for multi-shot, phantasma mainly does status damage, so savvy is the most important mod. Savvy does extra damage for each status effect the enemy has. Going for viral heat combinations, so we have toxin and cold. Heat Prox is the main damage dealer here, and we need Incinery Coat that gives the full 90% elemental damage. See, we want Viral Prox to do more damage to health, and Heat Prox reduce the amount of armor of the enemy. Heat Prox also do damage over time and can be stacked together many times. Shotgun Barrage for more fire speed. This one is more of a flex. If you have Blaze that gives more heat, that will be ideal. But since I don't have that, I'll use this for now. Phantasma's biggest weakness is ammo, so we should use shotgun ammo mutation to help get additional ammo. Now, let's go to a build with Arcane's Informer. We are keeping our favourite Arcane, Primary Merciless, for damage. Phantasma's Reload is one of the fastest for shotguns, so we replace Chilling Reload to Frigid Blast. Same 60% cold, but with extra chance. We move point blank, replace it with Atomic Fallout for more rad damage and magazine capacity. We add Galvanized Acceleration for more beam length, but this is optional. And that is a really good build for Phantasma. But 
if you want to bring it further, you can change the viral status to corrosive and on your warframe have two green shards. A green shard allows you to stack two extra corrosive stacks. So two green shards give a max 14 corrosive stack. 14 would be needed to fully armor strip enemies. Their health bar is yellow and when fully armor stripped, it turns to red. Armor reduces damage taken by enemies. So by removing the armor, they will take the full damage. In this build, we remove point blank, toxic barrage and charge shell for corrosive, incendiary coat for more heat procs, otherwise the build remains the same. There you have it. These are just some weapons that you should be using as a new player going into Steel Path. I hope you enjoy watching this video. Share this video to anyone you think might enjoy this. Like and subscribe for more Warframe videos like this. Bye.